Hey guys, it's Jeremy Wellborn, and I hope this everything's going great for you right now. I'm going to uh, kind of do a raw video as I'm traveling home of all of the things that I think about this 2020 Corvette as I can think of them. This is going to be raw and unedited. We're going to put it in drive. We're going to head on down the interstate, and uh, we're going to see uh, see a little bit about what this car has has how it's impressed me. Uh, since I took delivery of it at the National Corvette Museum yesterday. So, let's get up here, merge into traffic. I've got about, let's see, I've got 352 miles on the car at this time. And uh, so we're still in the break-in period, so I'm taking it easy. Uh, the, uh, the red line is at 4,500 RPMs. It's got a yellow indicator between 3,500 and 4,500, but I took delivery at the National Corvette Museum yesterday. Couldn't have been a better experience uh, for taking delivery of a new 2020 Midigen Corvette. I highly recommend it. Uh, the staff there is fantastic. Shane, Lori, Chris, uh, David, and Mac back there. They are, those last two there in PDI. But man, they make the experience just, you know, first rate, first class all the way. I was the second 2020 Midigen Corvette delivery that they've done. Uh, the way you get that delivery, you just do the R8C option on your uh, build, uh, and then it goes from there. So, highly recommend that. Uh, Adam Boca, the insurance agency there, we added this car to my policy, seamless, effortless, the premium's incredible. So, I took care of all that yesterday. They roll out the red carpet, just had a blast uh, taking delivery at the museum. I also want to thank Mike Furman, who uh, is my salesman that I deal with. Uh, he's a personal friend, does an incredible job with his customers. He's the number one Corvette salesman of all time uh, in the country. Will pass 5,000 new Corvettes sold in his career this year. 8,000 plus other vehicles that he's sold. Uh, just an impressive resume. But the reason he's, his longevity and the reason he's done so well is not just because he knows how to make a sale, but he knows how to make a friend and a customer for life. Uh, so, Mike, thank you for the way you made everything effortless and smooth and smooth and seamless for me. Just took care of everything. Uh, thanks for doing that. I also want to today, I'm real quick going to thank a couple of people. I want to thank uh, Andy from, uh, he's the president of Nova Stretch for coming to the airport, picking me up, taking me up to Bowling Green on Monday, and uh, for also uh, hanging out with me last night. Uh, he's just an awesome dude. He helped me put track wrap on the car. We're traveling today about 800 miles, so uh, I want to also shout out to Expel. They sent me some track wrap. We're going to be doing the front end of the car with Expel this, uh, uh, this in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Expel, for sending the track wrap so that uh, you know we can protect the car on the trip home. Uh, so I uh, just want to give a big shout out to them as well. Uh, so I want to talk about the car. The car is, is phenomenal. Uh, everything that everybody said about it in the reviews, uh, you know, you got the media event that they had, uh, the first drive event out in uh, Vegas and at Spring Mountain Motorsports Resort. Uh, everything that they've said as far as, far as the, the dual clutch transmission, Man, the shifting is just instantaneous. It performs, uh, you know, it's it's extremely smooth in touring mode. And then, man, when you jump on it, man, it is just, man, just precise. Uh, just the shifting just blows blows me away. Uh, so that's a great. The transmission's fantastic. The the power, of course, has got reduced torque right now, so I'm a little bit limited on, you know, what I can do performance-wise. But it's. It's already just knocking my socks off. I love it. Uh, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, so I can't wait till you know we get to 500 miles and, and they, that uh, that limiter uh, kicks off and allows me to really see what what she's got uh, with regard to power. So all of that said, you know there's a lot of things that people have told already reviewed, but I want to just so give you my personal impressions uh, of the car, different uh, things of the car. So that's what I'm doing in, in this particular video. It's going to be unedited. I'm going to upload it. Uh, I'm going to set that at lunch to upload so you guys can get that right away. Um, so let's talk about the car. So what are some things that uh, I really, really like about the car or I've noticed about the car? There's only a couple of things that uh, I'm going to say are yeah, just you know, things that I wish were different, uh, but there's so much about the car that are phenomenal. I absolutely love, I absolutely love my color combination, the ability to, to customize the exterior, interior color scheme, all the options, the 
you know, the black uh, mirrors and the rear spoiler, that option. The two-tone blue interior, the fit and finish of the interior is is world class, and it's there is absolutely nothing skimped on in this interior. I really, really like the uh, carbon fiber interior pieces. They are they are just beautiful. Uh, you've got them over here on your door controls. Uh, the same over on the passenger side. You've got it here uh, where your uh, mode selector is, and then you have this beautiful piece of carbon around the, uh, the cluster, instrument cluster, so really, really like that. Uh, I'm just, as I see things, I'm going to talk about them. This mirror, for example, this mirror is, uh, of course, the camera uh, pr provides your view up that's on this rear view mirror, or all you got to do to switch over to the, the standard mirror view is just pull that back, again, pull it forward, and you're back to this uh, you know, this high definition video cam, which I'm watching this truck go by. He's still in my vision there, and now he's in my vision next to me. There is no blind spot in this car with this mirror. Of course, you've got your uh, blind spot warning indicators on the mirrors, but having this mirror uh, on this, you know, exterior side mirrors, but having this rear view mirror that extends the view uh, to that, to the degree that it does, provides all of the blind spot monitoring you need. Check out this mirror. I don't know if you can see this, but you've got this button here that allows you to look at the different menu options. One of them being the brightness control. The other one being the zoom. You've got three levels of zoom that you can uh, zoom in and bring that image closer or back it off. And then you've got your up and down control, which provides seven different positions for uh, moving your camera up and down so uh, your view is uh, exactly the way you want it. I've got a little bit of my uh, spoiler there where I can see, so that's where I've kind of been running it for, you know, uh, in the last, you know, uh, few hours, and so I like it like that. I've kind of played around with that a little bit. Let's talk about this wall of controls over here. Uh, you know, this has been, there's been some criticism with regard to this uh, divider between the passenger and the driver. Uh, I'll say, hey, you know what, if you want to hold your wife's hand, right here. I mean, it works. It's right there, just on the other side of it. Uh, you put your hand on her knee, whatever, whatever you want to do, right there, that works. Um, so I'm not worried about that. So I want to hold my wife's hand, it's going to be fine. The other thing is, okay, of course looking at these controls while you're driving. Um, to look way down here, you've got to take your eye off the road, and uh, you know, that, that could be an issue, but these controls down here are for the passengers, so you know, they've very, very wisely laid it out like they have, and as you move up, uh, you get into more of the, uh, you know, the air control, and then up here you've got your, your driver's seat control, your temperature control, and your fan speed. So everything you need is really right up here. Now, if you don't like that, all you have to do is go into your climate. Oh, I've got my climate off, of course. I can turn it on like that. Um, and then I can control everything here on the screen if I want to do that as well. So... Uh, I, you know, that's perfectly fine. The PDR in this. I love the PDR. Just a beautiful setup screen. You've got your video overlay selection you can pick from. And you can preview your video overlay so you know exactly which overlay. I mean, which one it is and what it looks like, okay? So you can see what... That was a smart thing for them to do. So I can now see which overlay... What does this overlay show? And then, boom, I can record it and know what I'm going to have on my recording. Um, so I really do like that as well. The, <laughs> the driving experience. This thing drives... It rides so smooth in touring mode. You know, just, just a fantastic ride. Soft suspension. Uh, tire noise, a little bit of tire noise, a little bit of wind noise, um, but you know, it's typical. But the, uh, man, the smooth, smooth ride. Then, you know, you stiffen up the suspension and you turn your, you know, you stiffen your suspension, tighten up your uh, steering uh, with the sport mode, and, uh, you know, there you go. Then you can, you're ready to romp. Um, and, and a whole different feel, a whole different experience. I've not put it in track mode. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna run my car in track mode. I'm running my exhaust in track mode, but not my car uh, because there are way too many potholes on the interstate right here. Uh, 
hit, so you need a really smooth surface just to protect the systems, but I wouldn't run it on anything really except a track. Sport mode will take, do everything you need really uh, for, you know, street driving. So the mode selector is right here. It's perfectly fine. Now, here's, here's a, we got a bottle of water right here. Just practically speaking, you know, it's kind of in the way. And if I had a big 44 ounce drink right here, now these cup holders, they're awesome. Move it down there, and that helps a little bit. They're uh, a tiered level here, so this one's higher, this one's lower. Uh, but you know, it kind of would get in the way if I just rested my hand up here on this uh, mode selector. But again, it's just because it's this is a sports car, you know. Uh, but you know, they know that people be traveling, so just that's a minor thing. This the the uh, mode selector. At first, I was like, okay, so where I've not configured the side displays on my driver's instrument cluster there but uh and they're so customizable i mean it's it's just phenomenal what data you can put on each one but i wanted in my mode selector i was thinking you know well, how do i know what mode i'm in i noticed initially when i turned the dial went to my mode uh the words my mode popped up initially and then they disappeared well you know you move it back to tour mode and tour word pops up well I thought, well, how do I know what mode I'm in? Because those the whole screen looks the same besides that. Well, they've they've got uh, some indicators down there, uh, icons that provide that information for you. There's a person icon that would be the my mode. There is uh, a straight road that's the touring mode. Change it over to sport. You've got a winding road. Now your display changes pretty dramatically with some some reds and whatnot. When you go to track, it's a little different uh, look. But the track mode. Uh, shows a, a racetrack down there on that icon. So that's that's how you would know without seeing the word what mode you were in uh, from the dial. Um, I love the fact that the camera button is now here and I don't have to find it on my on my uh, infotainment system. Uh, so the camera front bumper, cam I mean, yeah, the, the front camera's here. Uh, I like, and I can while I'm driving, I can't show this to you, but I really like that there are other multiple views that you can select once your camera's up, front, rear camera, and so forth, uh, and so on on that. The gear selectors, uh, of course, it's just, it's intuitive. Uh, I really like the uh, pull-up, you know, and then the push buttons on park and neutral, and then the manual. Uh, pull-up for drive, pull-up for reverse. I like that. It's kind of cool, uh, and it's, you know, it just takes using it a few times to then it's, you know, it's a, it's basically ingrained, and boom, there you go. So getting used to that doesn't take long at all. The uh, heat and air system in here is fantastic. I was a little bit concerned about these, what looked like to be, you know, these skinny vents, uh, them being able to push out enough air and handle that. There's absolutely no issue with that at all. If that was a concern of yours, don't worry about it. You will get all the air you need. Uh, I like the one knob control on this, the one toggle, which allows you to direct it up and down, side to side, uh, easy to use, but the heat and air system's great. Another thing I really, I don't appreciate today because I don't need it, but I'm going to really appreciate it. I love it on my other vehicles, and that's the heated steering wheel. So having a heated steering wheel on the Corvette on the cooler days, just a really nice touch, and I appreciate that they've added that. All of the controls, on the steering wheel are intuitive. Uh, they make it make sense. This this one right here is your you know you've got your up and down, left and right, and then this is your it toggles, but it also uh, is a push button selector not a button. So that just so you know that. But everything's intuitive, uh, easy to use. It was very it's it's just all very brilliantly laid out. Your uh, man, these uh, paddle shifters are perfect uh, for whether you're up here on the steering wheel down here on the steering wheel uh, you have nice large paddle selectors so that's great uh, I like the uh, the windshield wiper and the uh, headlight uh, dials here they've got a little trim ring on them that just just sets it off makes it look you know just takes it up a step the only thing that I thought was uh, a little bit uh, something I'm not used to is that the headlight uh, you know the the dimmer it's a little farther back and so to me initially it felt like okay it's in the bright location not in the dim location and so that's you know not a big deal but um but you know pulling it and i've got smaller hands but pulling it and 
pushing it, it's not a big deal. It's just farther away than uh, other steering wheels and, and headlight uh, dimmers that I've been familiar with and have used a lot before. Okay, so you've got all of that. The sound system in here, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Clarence Garner, uh, C Garner Speed 252, and also to uh, uh, Byron with Drive 615. Both of them have done some videos with my car yesterday. I uh, appreciate them doing that. Uh, but when Byron was in here, we turned the stereo on. This is a 14 speaker Bose Performance Series uh, sound system that is absolutely phenomenal. We turned on uh, HD radio, turned some tunes on, uh, turned the volume to about a third. Plenty, plenty of volume even at a third. Crisp, clear, uh, lots of, of range, uh, great bass. Uh, so very solid, very solid. Best sound system Corvette's ever had. Uh, this it just just was really great. <laughs> Let's turn it up to two thirds, and then you're in. A, it's like you're at the concert. So really, really great job with that. Um, let's see. Let's just look around. Okay, the seat. I'm in a GT2 seat. Uh, I've been on the road now this uh, morning for three hours. Very comfortable. The only uh, the only thing that the seats are great. The only thing, of course, I'm having to drive with a pedal and not with cruise control on because I'm in my break-in period. Uh, a couple of things about that, you know, vary your speed during your break-in, and don't uh, don't use manual, don't use the paddle shifting, the manual shifting uh, when you're in your break-in period. Those are the things that uh, that are, of course, in the manual. Uh, I also want to remember, I want to say, you know, Chris at the Corvette Museum walked me through a bunch of the uh, systems and how things are set up. Uh, if you remember in the C7, you had the valet mode, that would lock your glove box, but it didn't lock this uh, center console. Well, the amazing Bryant Mines at uh, Corvette, you know, of course, said, well, if we're going to lock that, we ought to lock this. This now has a locking mechanism in valet mode that locks your center console as well. So, you know, they really were thinking of everything when they were thinking about taking this to the next level. Um, let's see. So, you know, the, like, again, I talked about the the interior, the suede head, headliner with the blue stitching in this car, it's, that, you, don't, you know, you're not looking up at it a lot, but it is, it's just a beautiful piece, uh, so even that, the attention to detail on that, I really, really appreciate. Okay, so um, a couple of things that uh, that I know, I had, <laughs> well, I had to get used to it, and you might have to at first, but my vision wasn't quite used to the, the uh, rear view camera instead of the rear view mirror setting. So, but now, you know, it only took about 20 minutes of driving and my, you know, what my mind's trying to process and seeing that, uh, it didn't take any time at all. So when you do your first drive, you might think, yeah, that's a little awkward, but as you drive with it, it's no issue at all. Okay, so, um, of course, you know that the, this being a mid-engine design, they've pushed this, uh, this uh, cabin forward, uh, you know, closer to the front wheels, which is great. On the track, this thing's going to be a monster. But, uh, you know, and when you turn, you're turning with the turn. Your hips are turning with the turn. You're not way behind the turn. So that's great. But it also means the door hinges, you know, they move them as far forward as they can to give you the room to get out. But I noticed this, that when you open the door, you really need to open it all the way to exit without kicking your, you know, your kick panel, uh, on whether it's the, the threshold here or even on the kick panel on the door. Uh, that's, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to kick that and they're going to scuff it up, you know. So just keep that in mind. It's going to be a little different than what you had with your uh, previous generation Corvettes. Uh, I will also say that, you know, you also have a little bit of a dip down into the, uh, into the seat or into the uh, floor boards here. That's a little more, uh, it seems a little, maybe it's because you've got to cross a wider space uh, where the door is because from the, uh, from the arrow piece out there on the uh, leading edge of the side to the inside is about a foot. So you've got about a foot to cross over into the floorboard from the exterior. So that's that's wider than the seventh generation Corvette. I mean, it is just a matter of training yourself, but you might want to remind your, your passengers, uh, you know, hey, when you get out, be careful not to kick, you know, if you're trying to keep your car looking brand new and, and you show it, that sort of thing. 
I'm the kind of guy that I show my car, I detail it out, but I drive it, you know. So, uh, and I take it, I take it out on, on the track occasionally just for some fun uh, track with the car. But, uh, but anyway, whatever your preferences are, keep that in mind. Now, when we looked at, you know, initially uh, under the hood, it rained a little bit yesterday as far as under the, the hood in the rear for the for the engine back here. Uh, you know, we're talking about cleaning that and what that's going to be like, you know, and thinking about washing out that engine compartment after a, a road trip or whatnot. And it all it suddenly dawned on me that when that rear hatch is open, of course, you've got your luggage compartment uh, back there as well that's exposed. So, you know, I've just got to, I've got to come up with a clever way to be able to wash my engine bay, whether it be, you know, just without a nozzle, just using low pressure, running water, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But, uh, you know, it's just a little thing. I do want to say that um, I'm used to what the, the, the uh, luggage space or the, you know, cargo space that I had with my 2017 Grand Sport. Uh, it's a coupe and, uh, you know, I can put a, quite a bit of luggage and, and detail supplies and travel supplies and coolers and whatnot back there. Uh, this, you've just got to be more creative with the type of, of luggage you're using or the containers you're using. Some of them that might fit perfectly, but soft-sided, so, you know, you're going to have to have some soft-sided sided luggage when two of you are traveling probably uh, to make it comfortable for getting everything that you want to get into the two compartments. So it's great having the rear one, the front one, but you know, I, with, with what I had brought um, and with what I'm taking back home from Bowling Green, uh, I got everything in here, but uh, to have had a passenger would have been a little tough. But it's just a matter of, you know, how you pack your things and what you put them in uh, that will make the difference on that. So, you know, overall, great job you're giving us for a mid-engine car, giving us the uh, cargo space that, you know, that Corvette owners who like to travel and, and go on trips together as couples and with their friends, uh, just really a great job making all of that happen in a mid-engine design. Uh, I want to thank the Corvette team, man. They've been just incredible. They have. This is a what I call a mid-engine masterpiece. It is definitely a, a home run, grand slam home run that they have that they have designed. When I got in it the first time, of course, you see the car. You know it's not. A, it, it's a, it's it's a new Corvette. It's a new design, a revolutionary new design. But it it. It's a Corvette, and some people still don't think it's a Corvette. I think it's a Corvette, and I can see the Corvette uh, evolution in it. Um, but but for me, when I sat in this seat, everything's new, but everything was familiar. It just, it's like a, a glove that fits perfectly. I got in here, I'm just, I just feel so comfortable in here. Like, I've been driving this forever, but it's brand new to me. So if that makes sense, I mean that's kind of my initial impression. When you're looking over the hood, you don't—I don't see the hood up here. Uh, it's gone, uh, but you've got your—you've got your uh, your haunches. You know, you're a very distinctive Corvette over the wheel haunches up there. They're great for showing you, uh, you know, where your car, you know, your front end of your car is. Uh, so that was just great design. But again, you know, it—it's. It drives better. Uh, it performs better. It's just a better car than than anything I've ever experienced before. Any Corvette I've ever experienced before. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal new Corvette. So GM Corvette team guys, y'all did a great job. Uh, I'm having a blast with this car, uh, getting to drive it home from uh, from the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky, to my home in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, so I also want to throw in just real quick, you know, I am super looking forward to having a vintage in 2020 Corvette on the track when I go to Spring Mountain Motorsports Park for the Corvette Owner School. If you don't already know, this is a big deal that they offer in the first year of ownership the opportunity to come to Spring Mountain Motorsports Resort. It's in Pahrump, Nevada, uh, just less than an hour outside of Vegas. And you can go out there, take the two-day school, you stay in their beautiful condos. It's a resort. They've got lots of amenities there. Um, just uh, They feed you. Just, they have great meals. Uh, most of your meals are taken care of in the, in the thing as well. Two days with world-class instructors uh, on their road courses in their cars, uh, you know, so you're not even driving, having to drive your car on the track. 
and it's it's the most fun that you can that you can possibly have in an automobile uh, going out there and getting on that track if you've never done that it's a thousand dollars uh, Chevrolet subsidizes that uh, significantly and so it's a thousand dollars for the two-day school I highly recommend that you that you give that out that opportunity uh, take the, take advantage of that opportunity um, I'm going to be out there, you know, it's just pretty much as soon as I can. Super, super looking forward to doing that in a mid-edge and Corvette. So, anyway, um, I think that's about it as far as my impressions go today. Uh, if there's anything you've got a question about that I could answer uh, when I get home from my trip, feel free to do that. I'll have about 950 miles on the car by the end of the day when I get home. Uh, but leave comments, questions, I'll uh, be happy to answer those uh, as, as I have opportunity to do that. And I hope everybody just uh, continues to have a great day, and thanks for checking this out today.